it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my she shed office or probably what a lot of you would call my craft room. I'm going to be giving you an in-depth tour today. So come on in and I will show you around. Before I dive into all of the details, I did want to mention that we are not 100% done with all the work we need to do in here, but that has not slowed me down as far as being able to work in here. So I'm so excited. I've been in here for about a month now working on videos, working on my Etsy shop, working on getting it organized, and it has really worked out so beautifully and so wonderfully. We sort of designed the She Shed with purpose in mind. So I really knew that I needed needed a space that would be beautiful and functional, but also would have so much storage. And it was also a space that I could close that door that you saw in the opening segment, that if it was a mess back here, I could close that door and then you would not see it at all. So the outside area that you will get to see in the very near future when it is all finished is going to be a grand space for filming and editing and for photography and all of that kind of thing, as well as storage and organization too. But this space right here is 100% dedicated to my Etsy shop and my decals and my stencils that I create for that, as well as storing all of my Dollar Tree supplies that you guys see a lot of my tutorials here on my channel about. Also, all of the supplies that I use to create my projects and tutorials. So the only thing we really need to finish in here is installing the flooring and the trim and that's it But unfortunately, we are not able to add the flooring until we get some things out in that big open area finished first And then we can lay the flooring and add the trim and I know it's gonna be done so so soon So I hope you guys will subscribe if you're not yet because we have so much more to share with you as far as details of the She Shed go and I'll also put a playlist up in the iCards in the description box to the She Shed playlist so you can get caught up and kind of go back and see the whole process because this is finally one of those steps where the finishing pieces are finally coming together and it's a space where I'm now actually able to utilize. Now I've spun you guys around. I wanted to sort of walk you through where I first initially showed you in the beginning. When you walk through this door right here to the side of me, you will walk right over to my desk area and I will give you an in-depth look as well as show you some of the supplies that we use to create the desk space. And you can also go back in through all of those videos and see this whole thing come together. So now above the desk, you can see we installed shiplap to the whole wall. And then flanking each side of the window, we have these acrylic clear plastic shelves. So they look really, really pretty and fancy. And right now I just have some Ikea little containers on there that will eventually get filled with odds and ends and crafty type thing so it will be a nice storage feature. Then my countertop here, this is from Ikea as well. It's just a gorgeous piece. We were able to get it while it was on sale and so this countertop was less than $100. So that was a great, great bargain. Over here on this side of my desk, I have a gold basket from Michaels. I was so excited to get my silver play button in here. I have it in the corner sitting, but I may eventually hang it up here on the wall. Let me know down in the comments, do you think that is a good idea or do you like it on the countertop? I kind of do like it right now because it's hiding the cord to my Alexa and she actually will turn my heater on. Alexa, heater on. So I have a heater down here below the desk back there and she is hooked up to Wi-Fi and she will turn on my heater in the mornings before I come out here. So that's really, really nice and handy to have. Uh, next to that, I also have this gold and glass dish that I got from Hobby Lobby on clearance a long time ago and stashed it away and it looks beautiful on this countertop. I also have my business card so I have those handy to grab when I do orders. And then I have all kinds of amethyst from my grandma. So she's had these for a long, long time. They are now new features of my desk, which I love. 
She loves purple and that is her birthstone. So that's why amethyst is really um, special. Over here on this side, again, I have another acrylic shelf with the Ikea glass bottles. And in the corner, I have my little note board. So this was a recent thrift store flip video. I will put that up in the iCards if you wanna see that. Um, I have candles. I love candles. That is such a simple and easy way to really warm up a space and make it feel cozy and welcoming. So I always have candles going in here when I'm out working. I also have an Ikea little plant that I put some pink flowers on to brighten it up. Uh, this little milk glass dish is from Hobby Lobby, as well as my really pretty and very, very simple little uh, tape holder. And that is kind of an overall look at the top of the desk. My flower string art is a recent craft night that I did. And then I will make sure to link all of these lights. They're from Amazon. I will link them in my Amazon favorite store, so check the description box for those. This is a beautiful chandelier and I don't even have all of the crystals hanging from it. It came with a ton, a ton, a ton of crystals and it was just a little bit too much so I kept it really plain and basic. Didn't add all that muss and fuss on there but it gave it that perfect extra little touch of glam that this space needed. And then these arms, arm little lights here are so, so pretty. They have the antique bronze finish. I love the glass globes on them. They flank the space. And if you can't tell, I was going for a more glam farmhouse look in here. So I really wanted that rustic look, but I wanted it to look more glam. So you can see those pops of gold and the brass and the marble kind of makes it look a little bit more fancy. But the shiplap and the wood elements kind of keep it more rustic. Now let's go ahead and move to the space below the countertop. I turned my chair around here so you could see it. It is from Kirkland's, I believe. It's a really, really pretty um, kind of ornate chair. It's got more of that uh, glam farmhouse style. It's very, very comfy. Perfect height for this desk, which is counter height. And then the cabinets on each side of the desk are from Home Depot. They're just their stock white cabinets. You can get them off the shelf. So this side basically has my printer underneath as well as my label printer. So you can see back there, we even installed a outlet back there and cut a hole in the cabinet so that I could keep my devices plugged in. It also feeds the electric to the heater, which is on the side there, and also holds my labels and my computer paper. Above that is a drawer, and inside I call this my junk drawer. So basically, usually you have sort of hardware type items in junk drawers, so I do. I have like tools, a lighter, some nails, sandpaper, batteries, tape measures, some cords, and that is the extent of my junk drawer. Now let's go ahead and move over to this side over here. I did kind of splurge on this unit just so I could have some extra drawer space. I almost bought two of these. This is probably twice the cost of this because you're getting more drawers, but I really wanted a lot of organization in here, so I felt like it was worth the extra added investment. As you can see too, we upgraded the handles. These did not come with any hardware on them at all. So these handles I did order off Amazon. Again, I will link that down below if you wanna check those out. They really were a simple, quick, an easy way to upgrade and give the space more of the look I was going for. Now in this drawer is kind of all my office supplies. Well actually this whole unit kind of has all of my office type supplies. So I have markers and pens and um, remotes to the heater units and things like that and the TV. I have tape and post-it notes, scissors, paper clips, binder clips, stapler. I have tons of tape back there and a calculator. Now down here in this drawer below, I have all of my Etsy shipping supplies. So I have a scale, I have all kinds of different size envelopes, packing tape, some scrapbook paper that I use to dress up my orders with. And then in this very bottom drawer is 
sort of like a mishmash of notebooks and paper and envelopes and boxes. And um, this is one of my tripods that I attach to the countertops. I will link that in my Amazon favorite store too. It hooks up to my cell phone. It's been so, so handy. And then the only other thing is the basket that I use as a trash can under my desk. And that was from Hobby Lobby. So like I said, I can't wait to get flooring and trim in here, but even without it, the whole space is really just coming together and looking just like I had hoped it would in my head. So let's go ahead and move around the room. So that was my desk space. Let's turn, come back out the door. And as you walk in, you will see this row of cabinets. What I really was going for when you open this door is I wanted you to be able to see this picture. And I talked a little bit about this, but this is a painting that my grandma had painted of my pawpaw's family home. So the colors of this she shed kind of revolved around this. So you can see some of the purples, even though it's kind of gray, it's like a purpley gray on the house and the greens and then the antique bronze frame. And then we just recently found this. This is an actual picture of the house, um, I think from the 70s. So there's some uh, history of the house behind it and it was just one of those things that was willed to me. So it got its proper place in the she shed and I just love it. It's all kind of surrounded by beautiful lighting and uh, it just makes me happy. Now, I have had so many questions about these tall, upright cabinets. We really wanted to get the pack system from Ikea, but it was so, so pricey. And even though I don't mind splurging, especially if it's going to be functional, it's going to last me forever and ever, but I still had a really hard time. And I didn't know how these were going to function to know if I needed baskets or shelves or drawers which is all the different things that they offer for those. So when I found these, these are from Menards and I'm not sure, I don't think these are all over the country. So if you have a Menards store, um, you can find them there. Otherwise, I'm not quite sure where else to find them, but they were only, I wanna say $120 each. And they came with the shelves and all of that. And they are so pretty with the shaker style panels on not only the doors, but also on the sides. It's just a really, really nice unit. They went together pretty, pretty easily. We also installed the pretty hardware on the fronts to dress them up. But once we got them built, we did have to level them all and attach them all to the walls. And I'll show you when I open the doors, kind of some of the other features that we added. But above, there was space between the ceiling and the cabinets. So I had these baskets already. They're from Target. And I just put those up there for now. They provide storage. They're also kind of pretty. I like the repetitive look of things. So that kind of just made me happy to have that kind of look. I added some Ikea plants in there just to kind of give it some greenery and some life. Um, but you can go back and see how I installed the little chalkboards on the top. I will link that video down below. But let's go ahead and I will show you what's inside these cabinets. All right, so here is a look inside the first cabinet. It is not super duper pretty, but at the top I have these baskets, which I got from Walmart a long time ago. They were in a linen closet and I didn't use them anymore, so I brought them out here. So these are just kind of odds and ends. I have some sewing things up there, yarn, all of my metal findings. This is jewelry making. Down here I have some pom-poms and wiggly eyes. And then down here I have some stamps and some stamp pads, some batting, and then I even have one extra that I haven't found anything to put in there yet. Down below is kind of my utility area. So I really wanted to hide my trash can. So this is just a 10 gallon trash can from Home Depot. I also keep my craft paper stored in there. That's what I use to cover my countertops and protect them while I'm painting and crafting. So those fit in there nicely. And then moving over here, I have an adorable little mini refrigerator. And let me open it up for you. You can see 
my, it's tiny. My son put one of his little Capri Suns in there. But I'm hoping to just keep a few little mini bottles of water in there so I can have a quick drink if I need to. Next to it is a metal box with some snacks in there. In the back I have one of Ikea's, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's one of their stirs that we love. And I'm gonna eventually get a coffee maker out in that big open area so that's in there until the coffee maker makes its way out here and down below that on the bottom is all of my cleaning supplies so I have some Lysol wipes paper towels trash bags some empty bags and some towels so that's like I said this is just kind of my utility cabinet but I also added some craft supplies up in the top now moving over to the middle cabinet. This one's not quite done yet either. I need to get to Ikea and buy more of these plastic bins that you see right here. But we are under the stay at home order right now. So there is nothing open or we're not really even able to go shopping right now. So I kind of had to make do with what I had. So at the bottom, you will see all of my vinyl supplies for my decals and my stencils. Next up in that white bucket that I have is colored uh, vinyl. Next to that is just a tray that I use for some of my photography that just got put there. Next up I have felt and some fabric paint. Again, I'm hoping to get buckets to kind of organize more of this. Next to that is some tiles for a project coming up. And then at the very top are some of my painting supplies as well as my paint brushes. So these metal buckets I got on clearance at Target. They are hearth and hand, and they are, I think they're supposed to be little planters, like you can put water in there, and you can put flowers, and then they kind of sit up like as a centerpiece. But I thought they would work so perfectly as a paintbrush holder. So I have some paintbrushes in one, it kind of keeps them organized, but I also have this empty one here because I'd like to get a gallon thing of water and then put water in these and use it to clean my brushes with. So that is kind of my plan for that. But here, that is pretty much all that is in. I think I have stencils up there and my uh, chalk paint, paintbrushes. So hopefully one of these days Ikea will reopen and I will get this a little bit more organized, but it's not too bad, honestly. It's all pretty what much where it needs to be. It's just, I like everything contained. So if it looks like this, that would be better. Now I've moved over to the very last cabinet and this is why I was saying I can't wait to get some more of those buckets from Ikea because this cabinet has the buckets in it and I've really, really liked the way that they have worked out for keeping things organized and you also don't have to worry about anything spilling in there because then it won't touch the shelves and ruin shelves they're nice and hard plastic so let me show you this cabinet basically has a lot of my dollar tree items i was able to unpack three big tote boxes of stuff in here after I had already filled it halfway up. So this cabinet holds a lot of things. This one up here has some of Dollar Tree's spring items. This has all of my fabric. This has odds and ends from Dollar Tree. These two buckets on this side have wood projects. So I love working with wood. I have quite a bit of it on hand in case inspiration hits and I have everything on hand so like clothes pins and dowel rods and paintster sticks and popsicle sticks and some little discs and cups like candle cups and plaques and that kind of thing so th that's what's in those two buckets this one has sort of dollar tree wreaths and baskets and stuff like that this one has dollar tree glass items so the mason jars, candle holders, um, yeah, vases, that kind of thing. Then down here at the very bottom, this one has canvases and picture frames. And this last bucket has all of my florals. So it's got some styrofoam, it's got greenery and flowers, it's got moss. So that is basically it for my cabinets. Up there I have 
bags and adhesives and stuff for my craft nights like my microphone and also in those I have kind of more decorative items that I don't like to keep out but it's nice to have in case I need to stage a photo. So here's a look at all of the cabinets open. You can see that they're nice and organized, but it's also really nice that I can just close the doors and you won't see any of it. You can also see that there is plenty of room once the doors are open for me to be able to stand here and not run or back into my other unit that's behind it. And yeah, this has just been a really, really great thing. It's kind of nice to have a wall of storage. Now moving over to this back wall here, I've had so many questions about this tile that is on the wall. It is from Hobby Lobby, I did not make that, but it is super pretty and it serves a purpose. It actually is covering up the power panel. So everything that is electrical runs to the power panel that is behind there. So even though it's pretty and I love it and I'm grateful that I found something that would work in this space, it really actually is serving a good purpose and covering up that ugly panel cover. And then above this is a reclaimed window. So I've had several of these and I refinished it. We installed it up here just to add an extra amount of natural light coming in from the back side of the office so it didn't feel like a cave in here. And then I just have sitting on my windowsill up here this cute little sign that says Shed Sweet Shed. My friend Tiffany gave that to me and it was so sweet so it kind of has its own little spot up there. And then moving over to this wall here I actually have a lot of video on this space already. So this cabinet at the bottom is an Ikea hack. I have a video if you want to check that out. This is the Nordly system and it is the same countertop from the desk. So it all matches and it flows nicely. But if you want to see how you can put your own Nordly cabinets together and make them work as a countertop and craft storage space, I will put that video down in the description box. This has been like my favorite, favorite thing in this whole office it has so much storage they're so handy they are really nice they open and close really easily so i've been so thrilled to have this we also raised this countertop up a little bit because i weed my decals here so we were able to make it the height that i wanted it so i could be comfortable as i'm working on my etsy orders so custom built in piece that just <laughs> made my life I couldn't be more thrilled to have this. We also had a little bit of a space here, so you can see that the wall runs about seven feet long, but the cabinets were short, so they didn't run exactly seven feet long. So I had this empty space. We were just gonna put it on the end there and overhang the counter, but we decided to flip it. That way we would have a little cubby hole at the end, and it's worked out so, so perfect. I have a giant cutting mat there that protects my countertops when I'm cutting and I just have that slid into the cubby as well as some of the bigger rulers and measuring things that I have for the mat. And then above up here, above the wall of the, the countertop, I have my command center. So this has been really, really handy too. I have a video on this, so I will make sure to put that in the description box and it will tell you where all of these things are from and then you can see how I installed them all. But basically I have a cork board, I have a dry erase calendar, below that I have a shelf and I have my chalk paints that I use all the time so I like that they're out and I can just grab them. I also have my favorite acrylic paint and then on this rail down below I have some twine and scissors, my foam paintbrushes that I use every single day. This bucket has some tools and scissors and pencils and markers, things that I just can easily grab. And then over here I have my clock and a filing system for receipts and notes and invoices and all of that. And then the other things I have are in this corner. This is a wonderful light to have, especially if you're gonna be weeding. So it it turns on, it's got a magnifying glass. I never use that part though, but if you're weeding, it's so nice to have a adjustable arm light to be able to see what you're doing. 
So I have loved having that there. And then I just have a thrift store lamp that I got for like $2, I think. This is an Ikea placemat, an Ikea uh, plant. And then this beautiful candle holder is from World Market. Just to dress up the space a little bit, I have outlets here as well as an outlet there. And this one, I usually keep my battery to my camera plugged into. This outlet over here has the USB ports in it, so I can plug in my phone or my iPad, and that has been really handy. The other great thing about this countertop is it is 25 inches wide, I believe, and it fits my Silhouette Cameo on here perfectly, so I can turn it to the side, run my vinyl, and that has been fabulous too. So it's not like hanging off the edge or anything. I thought I would also take you through the drawers because as you know, I need a lot of supplies. I do a lot of different crafts, a lot of different projects. So let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you what's inside each one of these drawers. So to give you an idea of size, I have two of the Norley smaller drawers next to each other. And then next to that, I have a long set of drawers and then another smaller set of drawers. And the reason I did that is because I wanted a lot of smaller drawers to keep things extra organized, but I knew I needed these bigger drawers for bigger things. And these have worked out really nice for all of my vinyl and decal things. Let me show you from top to bottom these bigger drawers first. So in the top, I have my paper trimmer. We all need those for paper crafting and for vinyl. So I have these other little drawers or little baskets in here that are from Walmart. You can also find them at Dollar Tree. So I have some scissors, squeegee, ruler, my weeding tool, tape measure that I keep handy, some markers, business cards, some baggies to put the decals in, and these are all my like pre-cut, ready-to-go decals. In the back there I have some, cra or some contact paper that I use for some of my stenciling. This one below that has some of my basic vinyl that I use constantly. So I have my transfer tape, my Aura Mask stencil material, and my white, black, and red vinyl, my Oracle number 651 vinyl. Now this next drawer may be really, really helpful to you. It actually is big enough with even more room to the side and the back to fit a Silhouette Cameo, which is what I use. And the great thing is, is I don't have to keep it out on my countertop all the time. I and mean, I can keep it free and clear and it fits right into one of these drawers just perfectly. And then the drawer at the very, very bottom is just kind of a hodgepodge of things. So I use this when I'm decaling onto glasses or vases. It keeps everything from slipping around. I have some business cards, some extra decals I cut, a stencil. Uh, blades and extra squeegees and extra weeding tools and some vinyl that I need to move into the tall cabinet behind me. So then that is those big drawers and then the ones on the side here. This top one I have all of my paint as well as some Mod Podge and some waxes. So I have some little colors of uh, Waverly chalk paint, some bigger bottles of Waverly chalk paint, I have this King's Gold, which I use a lot because it makes pretty faux wood. I will link a video down below if you want to learn how to do that. Some crackle medium, some chalkboard paint, and then in the front here I have some gloves and some of my glass etching and some rub and buff for antiquing. This next one has rope and twine and raffia and wire. This one has ribbon and some burlap. And this bottom one has some more yarn and some more sewing supplies that I probably could move that smaller basket of things down into. I forgot this was even in here. I don't sew a whole lot and I don't use yarn a whole lot so I think I forgot to even put I put this stuff down here, but I have a rotary tool, safety pins, sewing kit, buttons, some embroidery floss. So that is that. And we can move over to this side over here. I use these drawers constantly. Let's do the top ones first. This is my favorite drawer <laughs> because it has my hot glue gun, has my hair dryer, it has a little thing for my glue sticks. 
has my glue gun mat so nothing hurts my countertops and it has my wood burning tool. So I'm constantly in and out of this drawer because I use these supplies pretty much for every single project. Next on the top is my adhesive drawer. So this is another drawer I'm in constantly with my super glue and my tacky glue, my school glue and some more Mod Podge, stick glue. So that is a handy drawer to have too. Next level down, I, have a I literally have a tape drawer. So I have painter's tape, scotch tape, packing tape, washi tape, duct tape. And then over here, I have odds and ends. So I have some hook and loop. I have some command hooks. I have some blades and some magnets, some mounting tape, extra specialty glue sticks. Like these are fabric glue sticks. I also have some colored glue sticks. I think there's some glitter glue sticks in here too. So those are fun to have on hand to craft with. And then this is something cool. I need to find a better spot for this. It might go in that bottom drawer, but it is sort of like a paper trimmer, but it trims banners. So you can make different banner pieces with cardstock. I love this. I've used this to make my kids birthday banners and things like that. I will put that in my Amazon favorite store if I can find it because that is a fun, fun craft thing to have. Down below here is an empty drawer. So these uh, little dividers I got from Ikea, we did have to alter them a little bit so they would fit into the drawers, but I wanted those. So especially like in the adhesives drawer, if anything spilled, it didn't ruin my drawers. So they don't go all the way to the front. There's a little spot in the front, but it's still nice to have everything kind of contained. So I even have extra room to grow. This one, all I have in here is glitter. So I have a glitter drawer, basically just because I had no other place to put it that may get moved eventually. This is another empty drawer. And then down here is markers. So I have chalk markers, I have fabric markers, I have dry erase markers, I have paint pens. And I also have some chalk in there. So that is a look at all of my craft supplies that I love keeping in those drawers. You can see they are nice and big and deep and sturdy and hefty and very, very nicely organized. And I even have more room and space to grow. I would really love to hear what you use your own craft space or craft rooms for or what your favorite craft to do is. You can leave those down in the comments below. Mine, I basically just knew that I needed to have a lot of countertop space and storage for my vinyl decals and stencils because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of that in this space. So I made sure that those things were covered and then I made sure to also add a lot of little nicks and crannies and cubby spaces for all the other crafts that I also like to do. And I'm so glad to finally see it all come together and finally be able to give you guys an in-depth look and tour of this space. I've been dreaming about creating this video with you guys. I feel like I'm finally able to share it with you. I hope it brought some inspiration to you and maybe motivated you to clean your own craft room, organize or create maybe a little corner in your own home to have your own special little space for. You don't need much. I will say that I have used my kitchen as my craft room for a long, long time now. I literally had a drawer unit it was probably about this high and it had about six or seven drawers in it and that's where I kept all of my crafting supplies. I also had a basket in the living room so it was really really cute but it, you would never know that it had my silhouette cameo, all of my vinyl in there and all of my tools that I needed to create my vinyls and stencils and my decals in so that was kind of one of those things you just would never know. So I feel like no matter how big or how small your space, you can get creative and you can make them work for you. I hope you'll take a second and give this video a thumbs up for me. That helps out my channel so, so much. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button and I'll put the She Shed playlist linked below that so you can go back and see all of the details of how this She Shed came to life. And make sure to come find me on Facebook and on Instagram for even more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.